Hi, this is James Sondriger here at Juniper Networks Education Services. Are you familiar with our learning pads? We offer 14 different pads covering the Junos OS and specific Juniper technologies. Each path shows the courses we offer and the relevant certifications in the order we suggest to maximize your learning. Just visit www.juniper.net slash learning paths to get started. When you click on a track, you'll see all the courses in that track and the associated certifications. You can click each course or certification to view more details. If you follow a learning path, you'll get the most from your training with Juniper Networks. Now, let's get to your learning bite. Welcome to Juniper Networks Learning Bite. Hello, my name is Mara Finos, and I'm a lab architect with education services within Juniper Networks. In this learning bite, I will show you how to deploy Firefly Perimeter VM into VMware ESXi 5.5 server. Section Objective After successfully completing this uh, learning bite, you will be able to deploy the Firefly Perimeter VM appliance into your ESXi 5.5 server. You will know how to add or remove network interfaces to your Firefly Perimeter VM. And lastly, you will know how to change VM CPU or memory settings depending on your need. Before you deploy the Firefly Perimeter VMware appliance in your ESXi environment, I recommend you checking a few things. First, you need to make sure you have the right version downloaded from the Juniper Network support site. You should also ensure to read the documentation and release notes for the version that you'll be downloading. You need to make sure that the version that you're downloading is supported on ESXi 5.5 server. Next, you should have access to the vCenter server or ESXi host directly from where you'll be deploying. Lastly, you should have access right to deploy the OVF template into your VMware environment. Okay, let's jump into the demo here. So I have a vCenter server where I'll be logging in with the vSphere web client. I will show you first how to deploy the Firefly Perimeter VM using the vSphere web client through vCenter, and then I'll be showing you how to do it from the vSphere Windows client, the local client, directly to the ESFI host server. Okay, first let me log into my vCenter environment here. I'm going to use Windows authentication here. Click login. Okay, so once I log in, I'm just going to go to host and cluster here where I can see all my hosts, uh, ESX host uh, registered into my vCenter environment. So I'm just going to deploy this into my ESX1 server here. And under the ESX1 server, you see here I have different uh, resource pools which have different resource settings actually. So on a production scenario or production environment, you will have different resource pools for different needs. Like production VMs will have different resource requirement than the developer environment. So based on your need, you should choose the resource pool that that meets your requirement. In this case, I'm going to choose the learning by resource pool where I'll be deploying the VM. I'm just going to right click on that resource pool. Okay, I want to choose deploy the OVF template. By this time, I already downloaded the OVF template from the uh, Juniper Network site. So uh, you have the option to choose the URL or the local file. So if you have a, a web server where you download all the VMware appliance or any VM appliance, you can just choose that URL here, or you can just choose local file. In my case, I have the local file. I'm just going to choose local file here and click on browse. And then I'm going to select the Firefly OVA file that I downloaded under my desktop. Click on open. Okay, I'm just going to click on next. Okay, now it will give me some information about the version that I'm downloading. Uh, make sure to confirm that before you deploy. And then click next. Okay, now 
you should read the end user license agreement before you deploy and then uh, you can click on accept once you read it then click next again okay now i'm going to choose a name for the vm here which is the i want to call it fw1 fraud okay you can name it as you like or make more sense to your business unit here then i'm going to choose the uh, data center here so and the folder underneath the data center so different departments may have different folders you know in my case i'll choose the test vm folder i'll click next okay now it's going to ask me to change to the data store so again uh, based on your needs if you're deploying it out for production environment you probably want to uh, deploy it on a high performance uh, storage or a shared storage even uh, so that you can uh, you know do the motion uh, from to the shared storage so in my case i'm going to choose the first data store here which is plenty of capacity available uh, and then i would leave the virtual disk format take here since uh, the firefox parameter vm doesn't take much disk space you can leave it as default but if you're in a, a constrained uh, environment where the storage is uh, not enough available then you can or develop environment uh, you could choose thin provisioning uh, but i would recommend for production keep it default click next okay so now it's going to ask me the network where I'm, i want to place this uh, powerful parameter vm so based on your ESX environment you might have different networks added under your vSphere uh, standard switch or, or distributor switch depending on the switch type you're using uh, choose the network that uh, suits your need so i'm just gonna keep it default for now and i'll show you how to change it later on so uh, it's always a good idea to leave it default if you can i mean if, if, if it gets too complicated uh, and then before you power it on you make a change okay i'm just gonna keep it default here next so now it's giving me a summary of uh, of the deployment here okay so i'm just gonna click on finish i'm not gonna power on prior to deployments because i'm gonna make some changes before i you know power it on so i'm gonna click on finish so make sure to review this summary here click on finish now you'll see it's deploying right now um, and it should be done pretty soon here because i have pretty good network connections okay it's done so now i'm just gonna i can it's already showing up here under my research pool so i'm gonna go directly to the vm and now now i'll show you how to make changes to your firefly parameter vm and and how to add nics and uh, changes cpu and memory settings so under the summary tab of this vm i'm gonna click on edit settings and now i can change the cpu and memory requirements so if it's a you know production system you could bump up the memory depending on your uh, need but by default it comes up with 2 gig and 2 vcpu um, if you're doing uh, i would say you know go for 3 gigabyte if it's a production scenario uh, so i'm going to change it here so let's say 3 that's just gigabytes there and as you see here it added two network adapters so both of them are now pointing to the vm network which is the default vm network when you install the ESX server okay that's because they added all this in most cases um, so i'm just going to change that so in my case i'm going to choose network adapter one to point to my internet or untrust network so in this case i'm going to click on this drop down here and i'm going to choose my internet network there you go so this one is my internet facing network so in most cases you have network administrator will be adding all those networks into your ESX environment so that you can see them in here um, and the next network adapter i'm going to choose to be on the dmz zone There you go okay now i can add one more network adapter so but in this case i can add up to 10 network adapters if i need to um, 
and I'm gonna click on select here on the new device and I'm just gonna add one more network card go to network and then I'm gonna click on add and I'm gonna choose this one to be the VM VM then one which is gonna be my internal trust network I'm just gonna click on OK here so I'm pretty much done here I don't have to make any other change hit OK now it's gonna change the VM settings and now we have powered on I should go with part on now and launch I can I can see the console here as well and now it's powering on so I'm done deploying the VM uh, so it's now it's gonna go to the power on process so while we're waiting on this one I'm just gonna go quickly to my ESX server through the vSphere Windows based client to show you how to deploy directly to the ESX server instead of going to the vCenter server so I'm just gonna minimize the screen here so I have a vSphere client here on my Windows machine here. Now I'm going to go to the ESX One server directly. This is for scenarios where you don't have a vSphere vCenter server, and you're probably using a uh, you know a development environment. You might want to deploy it directly. So I'm just going to click on login. Click on ignore. Okay, in my case, is this server is managed by the vCenter server, but it, this is something you may not get if you don't have a vCenter server in place. So, uh, so right now I only see ESX1 because I directly logged into ESX1 server. I'm going to choose the learning by resource pool here similarly, and I'm going to choose a uh, file and then click on deploy the OVF template. And I'm going to browse to that OVF template. So I download it. I'm going to go to desktop here as well, similarly, and then select the OVF file. Click on next. Uh, same information is going to show me the version information, and then I will choose the license agreement. I'll click on accept, I read it, click on next, and I can choose a name here. In this case, I'm going to call it FW2. Prod. Okay, and again, it's going to ask me for my uh, data stores here. Since uh, I connected directly, uh, I see more data store because some of the data store I didn't want to share inside my VSEN environment. So, in this case, I can see the other data stores as well. I'm going to choose the default one uh, here because it's my test. Okay, now click on next. And then again, I can keep it default or I can choose thin provision. Let me choose thin provision here just to show you. And click on next. Again, I get to choose the VM network. In this case, I'm just going to leave it default just for showing uh, you how it looks like. And I'm going to click on finish. So now it's going to deploy the OVA file. And I can see the status here. Um, and then once it's done, you know, you can close it. It will tell me yeah, close. Okay. So now I can power on this one as well from here. Okay. So it's power. Let me go back to the uh, the web client here. And as you see here, now it's done uh, powering on. So I can just log in. There you go. So, similarly, I can go to the vSphere client and I can see the VM that I deployed to the vSphere Windows based client. Then I'm going to right click and open console and I should be able to see console as well here. So, it looks like this one is still powering on. It's going to take some time. So, there you go. So, I have now deployed the PowerPoint Primitive VM using both. Uh, vSphere web client and vSphere Windows based client inside my ESX environment. Okay, thank you for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. 
view our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.